the seven spot, which is pretty, pretty ugly. We'll see what we can do with it. Usually like a Stefan Diggs, but I'm not going Bijan here. <sighs> I'm not going Bijan here typically. I'll get him if he falls to like nine. But I like to go either Diggs or AJ Brown in the seventh spot. You can go chalky. You can bring it back with Josh Allen, but we'll probably try to do something different tonight. Got Buffalo against the Pats week 17. People are already starting to talk about weather, which is so funny. We're literally talking about weather in Week 17 games, which I think you have to. I really do. It's it's sick, but I think I think you have to. Now that being said, like Josh Allen's going to put up points against the Pats. Ton of badgeless people in here. Er seven clearly doesn't count, but we have two black badges. And two red badges and eight. Wow. Eight badgeless people. Curly Heat is probably looking at that week 17 matchup. I think this is interesting too. Like, are we ready to just put Chase ahead of Jefferson? Not even just because of playoff schedule. Like, I was thinking about this. Like, you have the addition in Minnesota with Addison. Is it getting in? Hawkinson as well, right? From the middle of the season last year. Is it starting to get more busy in Minnesota where Cincinnati's what we believe to be still condensed, condensed offense? And then on top of that, now you tack on the week 17. I could see it. I could see it. I hate the Kelsey start, to be honest. I've just been making the bet that Oh my god, give me Hill here. One time, Hill in the seventh spot. Like like the old days. <laughs> I don't mind Diggs. I don't mind going AJ Brown over Diggs as well. Coaster just went coastal. Need some salt. The old salt trick. Yeah, so we see Diggs and Brown go before Kelsey here. This is where I'm now probably selecting Kelsey's at the nine spot. He falls to 10, which is fine. I'm just going to make the bet. Like I'll still have my four max of 5% Kelsey, but you're paying for his single game upside. Not. And you're you're being charged for his value too, right? So his value meaning he has to outscore the tight end two on the year significantly for him to be worth his ADP. Obviously, it's possible again, but you look at some of these elite tight ends going going late, and if they can score near him, I mean, depending what round they go at too, right? So like the later they go, the less they have to score. But if they can come within 15%, within 10%, and they go round four or after, like Hawkinson and after, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not great for the Kelsey teams. But that being said, that's cash game thought. Underdog, week 17, all that matters. Who do you want to push forward as a tight end for week 17 in a one-week matchup? Obviously, you want Kelsey, but you're sacrificing one of those elite receivers or you're sacrificing a Bijan, etc. So we see the CD and Mon Ross start. JT, Austin Eckler, curious how this ends up. He's going to be left with pretty bare guys. Maybe Calvin Ridley makes it back at 36. Yeah, he's 35.4. I have all the ADPs like on the underside of my hand. It's tattooed there. <laughs> yes. When everyone realizes Chase is the true one one I'll finally get some JJ exposure. Makes sense. After the first four wide receivers, I still feel like Kelsey gives you the best chance to lap the field at the position with those middle picks. Possible. Thank you, babe. Oh, we got the coffee delivery. 
Yeah. Looks so cute. Give me. Gotta give the babies a kiss. All right. We could bring in Saquon here. I don't own a lot of Saquon. I wanted Waddle. Our next pick's at 31. Let's push it. Let's go. Let's go Josh Allen for this one. I have a plan. I have a plan. Whether it works or not, like, no idea. But I do have a plan. Pick 30. We'll see. Remind her to flip the screen so you can give her a tip. <laughs> hey, if it's too hot, I'm suing. Oh, burnt my lip. DK at 21. This guy knows something. This guy knows something. We see Barkley fall to 20. Honestly, that's sort of where he should be going. 16's a little early for me, for Barkley. It's not because of him, right? It's because of the players that go so much further, right? Like Stevenson at 30. Who would you rather have value-wise, right? So I think we will see Barkley start to fall a little bit. Oh my God, I don't think I can uh, highlight that comment, but Larry, welcome to the live stream. <laughs> Always commenting for the YouTube algorithm. Henry, Henry goes at 25. I like this little Chase Higgins. He's pushing off Burrow. I think you have to do that. I just take I take the chance as well that he comes back around, but that's different. Like different risk tolerance. Like if you're only doing like 10 or 20 of these, maybe you just go up and get burrow. But if you're doing 30, 40, 50, 100, whatever, you risk it. Risk it for the biscuit. Try to really push the value there. I don't think these guys are, are pounders here. Our goal is to get Stevenson in this Buffalo, New England week 17. I mean, I was gonna say if Tony Pollard's there at 31, I'm I don't care about the correlation, but I'm cool with either one of these to be honest. Yeah, he goes Smith. If Smith was there, I probably would have taken Smith as well. So it does work. We do get this week 17 correlation. Always, always for the algo. Try to beat the algorithm. It's easier to win BBM4 than it is to beat the YouTube algorithm. I will say that. Not from experience. <laughs> yeah, Larry, you are welcome on after you win this. This is actually part of our Patreon. If you sign up for our base level Patreon, you... Get one free show with the pound, a draft of your choice. Links to that are in the description. If you guys aren't already in our Discord, what are you doing? Post your drafts after you're done in the draft grade section and just get pretty much punished by the pounders in the chat. A lot of good information being shared there too. Really, really brilliant. We all know your plan. Yeah, yeah. It's like some big secret plan. The ADPs line up perfectly like no one's ever done it before. <laughs> it's all right. It's just the base of the lineup. It doesn't mean you can't get different. Like your first two rounds are most likely going to be chalky. Your first three rounds are most likely going to be chalky. Unless you get a crazy value or unless you big brain pull someone over here or over here. I've seen one of the pounders go CD Lamb Pollard pulling Pollard into the 13 spot. I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. It might be too early to pull people in best ball mania. Now, if you want to pull people like at the end of the puppy where you already know the ADPs aren't changing, but it's so early for best ball mania, you add Lenny on that team. You add who knows if they bring back Zeke. We see this team go to elite 
tight ends. This range is, is butt, I will say. This range is butt. Gibbs off the board. I don't mind DJ Moore. I don't mind Judy here. For me, it's probably like this, but I have so much DJ Moore that I probably have to make a little exposure smooth. A little exposure smooth out pick here. And then our next pick is we see Terry go at 41. I don't hate it. Like I said, that range is it's really nothing special. See, this is the area that I want to select running back. So even if Gibbs was available, it's a really tough pick for Gibbs. I'd rather be picking a running back in that range. So let's bring in Judy this time. Could have a breakout year. Hill, Olave, Smith. That's a fun start, especially get Smith six picks after you bring in a fourth receiver now. So still pissing. See Mike Williams go. Fifty-five, sixty-six. Have to keep an eye on this team. They have one receiver. You have to think, you know, the Mark Andrews was just for the stack, right? So maybe he's not completely crazy and not going to select all the elite tight ends. But don't be surprised when like pick sixty three is another QB. See Kenneth Walker go at forty seven. That's pretty standard. Mahomes, Jeffy, Josh Jacobs, Walker doesn't make a lot of sense. We'll see. This has to be a receiver, I think, for this team. This team goes three running backs. This is a great room to be in. I'm not going to lie. This is a great room to be in. Reaches on Burrow to get the Cincy. I think this is him just completely melting down. Heat 4W, I I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry. You just saw Joe Burrow go three picks before your pick. You had the double lined up. You even reached on Jamar on the one spot. Not a reach, but for the story, it sounds good. To a naked Burrow team. Naked. He goes, nope, you are not getting Joe Burrow. I mean, Joe Mixon. <laughs> for your Burrow team. <laughs> Absolutely not. He causes max pain on his life. Dobbins goes, what, 10 picks early? Seven? To an, this guy's... No one likes receivers in this room? Like, great. Awesome. Is Ayuk really going to be there? Is Kirk going to be there? Of course Ayuk's going to be there. All right. Give me Kirk here. Give me Kirk. Be psyched. If not, completely fine with going like this. Like this is probably what we're looking at right now. This guy's going running back here. So I think we do got Kirk. Let me pull up the, the disc, my Discord cheat sheet. Think about it. He wants to, he wants to keep pissing. Don't go receiver here, man. You don't need another receiver, right? Uh, he goes Kirk. Interesting. Um, our next pick is at 66, right? So I don't mind going running back here. Like, I'm not really tied to Pittman. Let's go Aaron Jones here. Let's bring in Green Bay. Has a pretty light schedule this season. They're playing Minnesota week 17. It's one of my top three, top four favorite matchups for week 17. And then Denver's versus the Chargers, right? So that's another, that's a sneaky good one, in my opinion. <laughs> I haven't been able to get the Burrow stack either. Sadness. You know what? 
it was so much easier to get the Burrow stack before the news that they were playing KC, right? Now, all of a sudden, everyone's willing to take a naked Burrow. But before that, before that news broke, it was extremely easy to get that, that double stack. I'm lucky we got it two or three times, I think mostly on the live streams, because pounders know. Pounders know. You leave them. You leave them. But I don't know, man. I don't know. His ADP is 41, 41 now, right? So he is starting to, yeah, 41. So he is starting to slip into a range that is better. We've been talking about this since the first big board when he used to go at this 2-3 turn at 26. People would reach on him. We were touting Lamar early, early. But we're always on the side of upside. Yeah, Jordan Love. We can definitely bring in like a late Jordan Love with this roster, which makes a lot of sense with Josh Allen. It's also easy to get one of his pass catchers, um, like a late read. You could even try to take a chance on one of the tight ends as well. Not something I'm doing right now until we get more information. I think it is something we can wait on with those two tight ends, with Musgrave and Croft. Wait for them to give you more information because guess what? They're not going to spike into the 15th round. You know, they might go in the 17th if someone gets ridiculous, but most likely you'll be able to get them in the 18th. Waller goes at 61. So we are seeing these tight ends come off early. It sort of sucks. We're not in a good position to take pits here, but I do typically like pits here. This is probably what I'm looking at. And just sort of hope that we get one of these guys. Uh-oh. One for one. One for one on the snipe list. ER7's got a couple rookies. Won't be surprised if he goes Trevor Lawrence. Goes Pierce. Brings in the third running back. It's a lot of draft capital. All right, we're getting one of the two. This is perfect. Like, this doesn't really... Sure, he's not going to put up 195, but you don't need him to. The upside with Mike Evans is if he gets traded, in my opinion. I think that's why he's still holding this, this ADP. I'm still going Tyler Lockett over Mike Evans. The best ball guy. This draft feels weird. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Uh, Hart says, Pound, are you targeting those top 17 week matches? Yes. Uh, the way I'm going about it is I'm trying to put forth the best team possible that has correlation, balance, and then we'll talk about the week 17 matchups. But like right here, we went Diggs, Allen, and we had the plan for the week 17 matchup. It's not because... And he fell right at ADP, right? It's not strictly because of the Week 17 matchup. It's because I think Stevenson's a crazy value at pick 30, pick 31. So if it lines up and it makes sense, like, yeah, let's let's do it. Absolutely do it. Now, if you have a tiebreaker where it's like, okay, which one do I go? I'm even in exposure. I'm indifferent. Like, maybe you don't have a strong stance on either player. They go in the same range. Sure. Let's side with week 17 correlation, or even if it's maybe another player on, on Denver, right? I'm fine with that as well. Bring in like a little double on the same team. The mistake I've seen people do, which is, it is really bad. When you go like a Justin Fields, right? Typically a run first offense, you're not going to, elevate three players in one game you probably aren't going to elevate two and they go dj moore they bring in Komet, they have herbert they go claypool late they just bring in all the receiver they got they go mooney if you have more than three of the pass catchers on a run first team that's where it starts to negatively it hurts you right because week 17 you're getting there and you basically have one or two dead players on that team because they're not gonna 
they're not all going to go off. So I think that's important to think about what teams are you doubling up on? Are they pass first? It definitely matters. Definitely matters. We see Gabe Davis go a little snipey Tay there. That was a nice little snipey Tay. We got Trevor Lawrence falling 13 picks right now. This is a weird draft. This is a weird draft. Richardson goes before Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> what is happening in this world? I mean, we need to bring in one of these two receivers. Because after this, there's a teardrop. So I don't care who you love at running back here. We absolutely can't do it. <laughs> we just can't. I think Deontay Johnson is, is fine here for a floor play. I like him better in cash games. But we do have Pittsburgh versus Seattle. So like this is where we will side with week 17, right? Dotson's got San Fran. We don't have the correlation there. I like both of these players. I'm not selecting Deontay Johnson here if he's my fifth receiver. I'll go ahead and I'll pick Dots in there. But being our fourth receiver, I think he makes a lot of sense, especially with his volume. When should we switch to week 15, 16? You know, I was thinking that was going to happen, but the ADPs... There's just some minor changes, right? There's some there's some minor changes. Oh god, we got two people going elite tight end. There's minor changes in ADP because of the schedule. So I don't I don't really think you make the switch to week 15, week 16. You can take it into account like with like Henry who's playing Houston twice. But when we go more than that, it's just it's a 16 man pod, right? Week 15's a 16 man pod. Week 16's a 16 man pod as well. And then it's a 441. Let me make sure I'm not making that up. I believe it's 441 for the final. So, yeah, it's a 441. So, which one do you think we should plan for, right? The one where we're playing 15 other people or the one where we're playing 440 other people? Tight end avalanche. I know. It's fine. It's fine. Honestly, it's a really bad strategy. Going even two middle round tight ends. This is early. I will even call these guys middle rounds. Six out of 18 rounds is, is early. It's terrible value. If you if you do up the numbers, it's terrible, terrible value. You go elite tight end. You have to wait at least until like this round nine range. What are the chances pick six gets another receiver? Let's pull it up. Pick six. Dude, I mean, he got crazy value on the Trevor Lawrence, brings it in with the Christian Kirk, and he has the crazy value here with Smith. He should likely be done at wide receiver. In my opinion, he's done at wide receiver. 104, it's, it's early. We can try to push it. It's just one, two, three, four, five teams that don't have a tight end. I don't really love bringing in... I don't really love bringing in Cook here. I still think there's a little bit of risk that they bring in another running back. Like what happens with Dalvin Cook? What happens with Lenny? I don't think he'll I don't think they'll end up with Lenny, but I'm starting to slow fade. Slow fade James Cook a little bit. I'd probably just rather AJ Dillon straight up. But that'll depend on Damian Harris's health to be honest. So something to monitor. No such thing is done at wide receiver. I love that. 
This guy went six straight receivers. He gets a crazy value on Trevor Lawrence. If Cam Akers can pick up where he left off at the end of the season, I mean, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. He pissed a little too long, but this is a great recovery here. This is a great recovery. And it beautiful. He's probably pissed he didn't get Evan Ingram, but a few picks early, nothing crazy. Four receivers and three, I'm sorry, four running backs and three receivers. Like this room is just all juiced up. I'm glad, I'm glad this worked like this. BBM, you have casuals still doing them. We got the connect four right here. Mahomes, Fields, Joe Burrow, and Justin Fields. Congratulations, we got a winner. This guy blew it. Could have made it five. We could have made it six. Uh, and the joke goes, not surprised. So this is honestly probably, it's a decent value. When you got people pushing up these tight ends, we're going to have to figure out the tight end position here. <laughs> Can Cade goes to pick 100? <laughs> Jesus. That's fine. I'm just going to keep scooping the value on the way. Uh, this range for wide receivers is pretty dog. We already have Jones. I think you can grab both of them, but we have the Seattle-Pittsburgh correlation, so why not bring in Zach Charbonnet here? We're going to have to piss yellow soon, like real soon. I have a feeling this is going to be a one QB team. Let's see what happens. I'm cool with Deontay Johnson's floor. Diggs has a really good floor as well. Tyler Lockett, I mean, surprisingly, was super consistent last year, but I think the consistency stays. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I think he had four games in a row with the touchdown. I think that upside, I should say that upside is still there. Maybe a little less consistent, and obviously touchdowns are hard to predict, but with JSN in the slot playing underneath, I don't think it kills Tyler Lockett's value. I think it hurts Metcalf a little more. And we've spoken about that before too. P Ryan at 115. We're getting the news about Javante, the hope that he's ready for week one. It sort of gives me like JK Dobbin feels from last year. That knee tear wasn't a clean tear like Brees Hall's. So I don't know. If there's a chance that Javante Williams is back by like week four, this is probably too expensive for P. Ryan. If he's back by week one, like, like P. Ryan will still have value. But you're looking for that single game ceiling. Like, who's going to give you a bigger single game ceiling week 17? You got Penny right in front of him, one pick ahead. We know he's the moonshot. Injury risk galore. This has been a super, super odd draft. But I'm comfortable with my receivers just based on the other teams. This guy pissed yellow, which really helps us. Fryermuth goes. We we're going to go Patty there for the Seattle correlation. Seattle Pittsburgh. Good little scoop there. Um Eeny Mini Mini Mo. Let's go. We're strong. We're so strong at running back. We're not picking a running back for a long time. Let's go with Myers. They're keeping Hunter Renfro, it looks like. So Hunter Renfro presumably is going to be in the slot. You got Devontae Adams playing the X. Jacoby Myers can play all, all over the field. I think he'll end up being one of one of the favorite targets from for Jimmy over in Vegas. Also gives us another late round stack we can do with Jimmy here. Could also bring in Mayer. 
and bring in some pretty nice correlation that way. I love Gino in this range. I love Goff in this range. Then these running backs, I probably have Penny at the top. Then P Ryan. A chain just seems expensive at 111. We see him dropping here to 121 so far. We're up in six picks. I can't do the Jamal pick this year, guys. Can anyone sell me Jamal Williams this year? At 121, they bring in Kendry Miller. You have re you have Kamara restructuring his contract. You have Higby going to 123. What is this draft? But yeah, Kamara restructured his contract, so likely staying in New Orleans. We see Gibson go before these running backs. Jesus. If Penny's there, did we just click Penny? We don't have any Arizona correlation for Week 17. We would be done at running back if we go Penny here. We don't have a tight end yet. I would really like... A tight end. Does anyone pick a tight end after me? I don't I think we can risk that no one goes Chiggy here. And let's bring in Rice. I'm between Rice or Mingo. We're strong at running back. We really need we need another receiver. And I'm cool with taking that shot on Rice. I honestly I don't think he's getting any cheaper from this spot. So Mingo's another good one there. Carolina is playing Carolina play week 17 Jacksonville we got Casey versus Cincy I'm liking the team it's we got to go three tight ends that's pretty obvious we'll see if Chiggy makes it back to us I would really like him to be our tight end one but if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen I've been buying the Knox fall as well she's gonna have that red zone rule that's all i care about <laughs> pounders what do you think lakers or nuggets do you want my honest opinion i have no idea so go with the nuggets this is not uh money advice <laughs> it's tough only taking him when he falls past kendra <laughs> that's hilarious only taking Jamal after Kendra. See Kendra go here at 134. We ended up with 22% Kendra Miller in the big board. Dude, all these teams have two tight ends. Like no one's going tight end here, right? And they all they're like all elite tight ends, too. This team has Kelsey and Mark Andrews. Sir, don't even think about it. Don't he brought down a triple zeros too. ER7. I don't think he can go tight end. He has Ingram and Frymuth. I'm done there with two. And then Woody's has George Kittle and Kyle Pitts. Don't cause pain. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Oh no. We have a Gainwell truther in the chat. Yes. So this is just called planning, boys. We said these guys all have elite tight ends after us. Most teams have two. Let's take the chance that Chiggy comes back. If you love something, let it go. Let's go. Drop the like for that one. Chig Monster. Now I feel better about the team. Now I feel better about the team. Super strong at running back. Obviously strong at QB. Diggs, Judy, Lockett, Deontay Johnson, Jacoby Myers, Rashi Rice. And we got Chig. I love that. Dennis, what is going on, my man? Welcome to the live stream. We get Chiggy, who has Houston two times in the playoffs. And a little bonus, they play Seattle as well. Week 16. Very neat. Very, very neat. This has been a strange, strange best ball mania draft. So, so odd.
and it didn't start getting weird until like right here. This Mark Andrews pick with the Kelsey stack. And then we see Joe Burrow get sniped at 45 from the one spot that had T and Jamar. And he goes TJ Hawkinson, Joe Mixon at 49. He doubles down after not getting Joe Burrow. <laughs> I love that. That's such a troll move. That is such a troll, troll move. This guy ends up getting no Cincinnati correlation at all. But he brings in Kadarius Tony for KC, and then he spends up on Anthony Richardson too. Full round and a half on Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> it's just been, this has been fun. Let's get chiggy with it. I love that. I love that. I'm just seeing this. Did you see underdog app update? What did they do? If you're still here, let us know what they did in the update because it looked the same to me, to be honest. Van Jefferson at 145. I mean, I like him down here. But like, when you pull him up to 145, we start to have questions. I have questions, and you need to provide answers because that's weird. I don't like it that much. I don't like it that much. It's not like he's like, yeah, I have you know Matthew Stafford. I'm making a bet that the Rams are going to smash this year. Just like, no, I'm just going to bring in Van Jeffy here, 27 picks before. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, beautiful. We are in need of, well, I mean, we need a tight end too, but that's besides the fact. We need another receiver here, and it's looking like one of these. Houston versus Tennessee. That makes a lot of sense with our chiggy, chiggy pick. But we got Dallas again. Dallas against Detroit, right? In Dallas. We don't have anyone on Detroit. Dude, let's just go Nico. I have so much Gallup. Let's pull up the Gallup exposure real quick on... <laughs> all right, all right. We'll make an exposure smooth out pick because of week 17 correlation and because I have a Gallup problem. So we got Houston correlation here with Chiggy. It makes sense. It makes sense. I remember someone brought up my Gallup problem. I think it was during Superflex when I had 36% and he was going at like 178. Now, of course, this is before the NFL draft. So he was a major draft winner and he's, he's soaring up the board. I mean, 146, talking 30 picks, almost three rounds of value. And ER7 scoops him here. I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable with my receiver room. We didn't get any screaming values in this draft, right? I mean, we got, I guess we got Rashad White a full round after ADP. That's that's good. Chiggy a half round, but nothing crazy for values. This has just been a good draft. Good planning, I should say. Gallup is so undervalued. Oh, my God. This is why you have the wrench, Ben. This is why you hold the wrench. If you guys don't already know, we're holding tryouts. I need a couple new mods. We are in the hunt for two new mods. I need your 40-yard dash. I need your vertical jump. And I need your 225 bench press for reps. Send it in the DMs. Wrong answers only. And if you come out to the live streams, that helps. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Algier, Warren. I like these RBs, but again, look how strong we are at RB. I like this. I like this group. I think we can push it. I think we can get another receiver here. Diggs, Judy, Lockett. Yeah, we need another receiver. We need another receiver. Without a doubt, this is an eight receiver team. This is going to be a three tight end team. And we're on the back half here. Uh, no, we're not. We're on the front. This, I think this half needs tight ends. This guy's got three. This guy's got two. 
So maybe not. This reach is just wild. The Tunyon pick at 147? Did anyone catch that? Tunyon at 147? Is that 50-something picks? Uh, I like Shahid here. I like Shahid a lot here. Yeah, it's like not even close. We're done at receiver. We are done at receiver, and he's the perfect spike week guy. This isn't the pick where you go like, oh, I'm going to bring in Hunter Renfro because how's Hunter Renfro going to spike in your lineup with these other seven? I don't think he will. So you got to make that best ball type pick right there. You got to give them a chance. Like my favorite guy at the end of the year last year was Zay Jones. And that smashed. That smashed. Rashid Shahid started in the 200s too for the first big board opening. Knew that wasn't going to last. I'm still fine with him at this ADP. 161. I think that's a good spot for him. And we need a tight end on the way back around. Hopefully one falls... If they don't, we can probably – it's probably something like this for preference. We would be done at RB if we bring in Tank. Zeke goes. See you later. Thank you. Hunter Renfro goes. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's not his worst pick. I mean, for someone that constantly reaches, it's fine. Hill goes. Pairs him with a Joku. Yeah, this is going to be a three tight end team anyways. So just give me three guys with names and hair and eyes. Maybe some hands. Ooh, the Discord link expired? Okay. Wow. Let me... uh. Let me send it right now. I didn't know they did expire. There it is. Make sure you go over to the cheat sheet section. We got our free draft guide for subscribers. And this is an easy Knox pick correlation with Josh Allen. Get him eight picks after. And we're just, I'm buying the Knox dip. I'm buying the Knox dip. He's going to be on the field. I don't think he's just going to be blocking on the field. You're really getting these tight ends in this range. You're just looking for tight ends or like touchdown spikes. That's all you're hoping for is for these guys to somehow find a way to get eight touchdowns. We will tap one of these tight ends on the way back if they're still there. I wonder if Jimmy will fall to us at I want him to fall to 199. We can see. So Bryce Young goes 13 picks after. It's really going to depend on these teams here. Do these teams have enough QBs? Derek Carr, Goff, and Prescott, and Lawrence. This guy should be done like a long time ago. Herbert and Staffy, he could be done. He could bring in one more. Richardson, Joe Barrow definitely should be done. Fields. Trey Lance might want to add one more, like a Kenny Pickett or Jimmy Garoppolo. Mahomes in love. I would be done here. Kirk and Geno could be done. You could add one more. Depends on depends on your team, how strong it is, and what's the best available at that at that time. But I think we can risk Jimmy falling to 199. I don't think it's the craziest thing. I also wouldn't be heartbroken if we got CJ Stroud or if we just went one QB. Like, you're paying so much for Josh Allen. He has to be the guy in the playoffs, anyways, in my opinion. So, see McBride creep up. We just see CJ Stroud go. Okay. This team had Deshaun Watson, so that makes sense. This team has three QBs. Tua, 
just Tua for ER7, so he has QBs on his mind. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Kenny Pickett from ER7 here. Goes Jimmy. Goes Jimmy to pair him with Devontae Adams. I probably would have went Kenny Pickett there. You have Jalen Warren. You have Pat Frymuth. I think Pickett's the better overall QB anyways. Let's go Kenny Pickett. We have Deontay Johnson. Makes sense. Let's bring in Pickett. We get him 12 picks after. Maybe he can uh, raise that extremely, extremely low touchdown rate. Yo, Discord gang, let's go. Spurs got the number one pick. Thoughts on the NFL switching to a lottery? It's, I think you should. But again, now you got all this stuff about lotteries being rigged with like the NHL. So it's tough. It's tough. Teams shouldn't like actively tank, right? It kind of ruins the end of the season for another team. Maybe they need to win and that team's getting a free win and another team doesn't make the playoffs because of it. I don't know. It's how do you guys feel about tanking in your own league when someone just stops paying attention, they just lose out just to get a higher pick next year. Like that's why we do random selections every single season. That's the way I see it. I'll have to update the Discord. If you haven't already, you guys are new in here, drop a like on the live stream, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications if you want to jump in these live drafts with us. And also make sure Michael Mayer falls to us. That's also got to be in the promo. Oh, this dude's got no tight ends. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way Mayor makes it back to me. Hurst goes. Hodgins goes. <laughs> Conklin before Mayor. We get Mayor 19 picks after. Juicy. Juicy. Woo, woo, woo. We just juiced up the pot. My God. Let's go. So we got all our tight ends after ADP. Feels good when you go zero tight end to get all three of your tight ends after ADP. Sheesh. Hmm. Beautiful. I like the Zach Evans pick for right now until we get more news about Cam Akers and that backfield. Aaron Williams, sleepy, sleepy sleep. We might we might be drafting Kyron ahead of Zach Evans eventually, but until we get news, I'm on board with Zach Evans. They clearly didn't use Kyron last year. And you saw the whole debacle in LA when you had K Makers sent home for two weeks because they were trying to trade him. They were running with just Henderson and Kyron, and they're like, this isn't working. Then they cut Henderson, they bring back Akers. So I don't know how much trust they have in Kyron Williams. Now we need to add an RB, <laughs> and we're done. I like this team a lot, I like the way it came out. Kareem Hunt goes at 204. I'm trying not to touch Kareem Hunt. I'm trying my best. Alan Robinson goes. Not a bad like 18th round pick if you have Pickett, but I'm not. 
I'm not going on my way to pick Robinson unless it's correlated. I'd rather Corey Davis, to be honest. I think Corey Davis is a really good 18th round pick. Clip it. RB's here. Let's kind of see what let's kind of see what the field's doing. I like the Cedric Tillman pick. Ah, oh, there goes Dwayne McBride. Of course, ER7 snipes McBride on us. Honestly, I don't mind going Joshua Kelly here. When everyone's zigging, sometimes you have to zag. So if this guy can just pick Joshua Kelly out of thin air on us, whew, he did go running back. I saw green in my a noose got real tight. Going Joshua Kelly. Let's get different. Eric Gray, Pat Hall. Some of these guys. They'll be drafted. We're going to get good news about some of these players. People are going to overreact. They're going to select them too high. Max Sauce, welcome to the live stream. Welcome. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can fill this other this other draft. Nope. I'm going to leave it. Let's pull this up. Let's pull it back up. We'll uh, go over ER7's team. We'll go over my team, see how it came out. This was Best Ball Mania, an absolute fist fight of a draft room. And uh, we were just slapping people with fish. Like we had a huge trout in our hands. And we were just slapping everybody, pretty much. We got basically everyone we wanted to get. We had to divert to Kenny Pickett when ER7 went Jimmy here, but we get Pickett 12 picks after. We correlate him with. Deonta Johnson, you would like to get a second person correlated with Pickett. If Mayer and Conklin weren't here, maybe we go Washington, Dwayne Washington. Darrell, excuse me. Daryl. The seventh lineman. But we'll go over this team. Let's let's do that now. Josh Allen, Kenny Pickett. We get Pickett, 12 picks after. I like the value on it. We could definitely stop there at two. We went zero tight end build. We end up with Chiggy. Little bit of luck fell to us six picks after. We bring in Knox. We get Mayer, 19, 18 picks after ADP. And we're good there. Tie a little bow on it. Make it look nice. Ramondre Stevenson, Aaron Jones, Rashad White, Zach Charbonnet, and Joshua Kelly. Mix it up. Mix it up with that last pick. We were going to go to Wayne McBride, get sniped two picks before us. I think that's fine. Uh, we get the Week 17 correlation with Ramondre, with Josh Allen and Diggs. How are the Patriots going to beat Buffalo? They have to run the ball, keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hands. Also expecting it to be a cold game. So I'd rather, like, I don't know how much, like how much Mac Jones are you guys going to do this year? I can't really see myself adding a ton of Mac Jones especially seeing the the playoffs. New England has KC, Denver, Buffalo. So week 15, they're going to have to throw the ball. It's pretty safe. Week 16, I think it's a pretty ugly game against Denver. And then week 17 against Buffalo. They're going to try to run the ball as much as they can in the first quarter. If they get down, then they might have to throw. But even then, you've seen them run the ball like on third and nine in a must-win situation. So... Diggs, Judy, Lockett, Deonta Johnson. So we go high ceiling. He doesn't have the highest ceiling. I actually think A.J. Brown has a higher ceiling than Stefan Diggs. I don't know if that's a crazy statement to make or if it's just my feelings, but that's the way I feel about it. I feel Diggs is a better cash game play than A.J. Brown, but we did go Diggs here, and then we bring in Jerry Judy, who I think is going to have a monster year. Tyler Lockett, Deonta Johnson. This is a pick, Deontay. It was between him and Dotson. We had the correlation week 17 against Seattle, and that pretty much was the tiebreaker right there. I'm not bringing in DJ as my fifth receiver on a team, but as my fourth, I I don't mind it. Jacoby Myers, Rashi Rice, Nico Collins, and Rashid Shahid. I like it. I like the way 
I like the way it turned out. I think we're if we go back and we look at these other 12 teams, I mean, no bias at all. No bias at all. I'd say we're moving on. You got Tua and Jimmy for ER7. Evan Ingram and Fryermuth. I'm fine with stopping at these two. This is probably like around the last pairing that I would consider like a two tight end team. ETN, Gibbs, Pierce, Jalen Warren, Zach Evans, and Dwayne McBride. So you bring in three rookies. You got Pierce and ETN. The, I, I think it works. It's a nice group. You're hoping that you know Zach Evans takes over the job in LA or at least works out a role, I should say. And Dwayne McBride, same thing. You're pretty much hoping that Cook moves on and Dwayne McBride's the number two behind Madison ahead of Ty Chandler. But reports are out there. Ty Chandler, they're starting to like him. So we might switch from Dwayne McBride at some point. It's really, it's going to depend on the reports, right? And you can't always trust a beat reporter. Let's get a little trip down memory lane right now. Josh Jacobs last season, when he fell from the fourth round all the way to like a late sixth round pick, because beat reporters were saying that Amir Abdullah and Zamir White were going to take carries and targets from him. I had 18% Josh Jacobs. <laughs> Contract a year, use him and abuse him. The team didn't have any ties to him, right? They could have just let him go at the end of the year. So what do they do? They're going to use him. What's he want to do? Contract year, he wants to do well. He wants that fat contract. So we made a bet on that, and that, was, that turned out to be very good. Devontae Adams, Jalen Warren, Waddle, excuse me. JSN, Quentin Johnson, Jonathan Mingo, Hog Pierce. I like this group a lot. I like the Wandell pick. And you got three rookies here. So I do think you needed eight receivers because rookies typically start off slower. That being said, I think JSN will start off faster than, than most rookies. But I do think you need eight for that reason. Maybe if one of these guys is... Like I pick 81, if this is like Dotson, maybe you don't need Wondell Robinson. But it's a nice looking team by ER7. I think the only pounder that joined us in this best ball mania draft. So it was relatively easier than we're used to with you guys jumping in the drafts, stealing all our value picks, stealing our secret picks. But I want to thank everyone for coming out. If you guys haven't already, drop a like on the way out the door if you enjoyed the stream. Hit the subscribe button if you're new and the bell for notifications so you can jump in these live drafts with us. Until next time, Pounders.